What's up guys, Thaddeus here. In this video today, we're actually gonna be talking about a few things that I think a lot of other people aren't talking about. And as anyone getting into the online space, getting into e-commerce, into dropshipping, that you should definitely know, especially since we're in Q4, okay? So this video is gonna kinda go over these things that aren't really talked about. And then at the end, I'm gonna talk about how you, even if you're a beginner or you know you do have experience, you have a store doing maybe like a K a day, a little bit more, how you can kind of prep and make sure that you don't lose money this Q4 and that you actually can make more money and capitalize on that, all right? So we're gonna get into the video. I took notes because I'm trying to make this a good video for y'all. So first, I'm gonna give you guys a few stats, okay? Facebook ads especially, they get 43% more expensive this time around, this quarter, okay, this Q4. That means if you were originally paying like $20, $20 okay, to get a customer to enter the information and hand you their money, it costs you $20, Q4, you might be looking around 40%, let's do some math, like 20, $28, around there, $28, okay? Which, I mean, if you, it costs you $20 to sell, like say a $60 product, even if it's up at 28, your margins are still decent, but there's ways to improve that and there's ways to go around it, all right, guys? That's just, again, something that you should be aware about. All platforms basically experience this, because again, if, if you look at it, right, it's not Facebook necessarily like themselves cranking up the price. It's an auction platform, right? People are competing against others, bidding against others' ads so that you can get seen in front of more people, so more people see that specific ad and you know they get the money, right? So it's an auction-based platform with more advertisers pouring money in, more people bidding. They can't just all of a sudden show 10 times more ads because then that, you know, that makes a really bad user experience on the platforms like Instagram um, and Facebook. Imagine if you're on Instagram, just scrolling and it was just ads every single post, right? They can't do that. So with more advertisers dumping more money in, it's more competitive, thus prices go up. Next thing I wanna talk about, more money is driven from Google than Facebook. Facebook's a social media platform, Instagram's a social media platform, you know, Twitter, Snapchat, etc. Google is the world's largest search engine. And the second largest search engine is YouTube. So the top two search engines are owned by the same company, Google, and they're responsible for driving, I think almost like three times more sales than Facebook and Instagram. So don't just look at like Facebook and Instagram ads, um, like purely for Q4, right? There's a lot of ways to capitalize on this. Um, and there's a lot of ways that you should be prepping for this going into, you know, that, that really big cyber, you know, or Thanksgiving to Cyber Monday sort of like weekend, because that's when a lot of people spend money, right? And I'll touch on that in a second. Um, actually, my notes tell me I'm gonna touch on that right now. <laughs> Last Cyber Monday or the weekend around Cyber Monday, so Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving night, Black Friday, that whole weekend, and then Cyber Monday. It used to be those two separate things, and then you know the online boom happened, and it's just every single day uh, in that little like four or five day time period. But 19.6 billion dollars, okay, that's a B. 19.6 billion dollars were spent that last time around, okay? Here's some maths for you. That 19.6 billion, that five day time period, if you captured 0.0001% of that, you would have a 20K weekend, okay? A 20K weekend for that small, that that tiny like breadcrumb from that pie. I love pie. Now, if you captured 0.0002% of that, that giant spread again uh, for that five day period, you'd be almost at a 40, like 39.4 or something, 39.4K like weekend, right? For a lot of you guys starting off, those would probably be some really good numbers, right? Most of you guys aren't doing, you know, anywhere between like five, to 10K days like consistently yet. Having a 20K weekend, a 40K weekend isn't out of, you know, isn't out of ballpark range. Like that is so doable. And I want you guys to understand that, but I also want you guys to understand that you need to do things um, to prepare for that and just prepare for this quarter four. Um, the next thing guys, the biggest boost in year over year revenue, right? Or sales has been from mobile, like mobile sales, right? It's easier to buy things through your phone and a lot of these social media companies, you know, Instagram stuff, they support buying through their own platform um, and just making a better mobile shopping experience, right? So a lot of those numbers, a lot of these, this anticipated growth year over year is because of mobile sales, right? But prepping for that and preparing that on the mobile side of things is super, super important, okay? A lot of you guys, especially when you DM me like, hey, can you check out my store? Or if you're in the program, like, hey, I want you to review my store, kind of give me an audit. I look at it and it's like, yeah, your desktop site might look good, uh, might kind of be optimized, but then you go on mobile and you're just like, what? What the hell is this? So it's a, you know, a little bit of a take that, that we'll touch on right now. Next thing I wanna also bring to you guys awareness, right? 56% of abandoned carts are made because there's unexpected costs that show up after they've decided that that product is interesting, they add it to the cart and they proceed to check out 56%, okay? Now, 43% of abandoned carts are also dropped, right? Or abandoned because the shipping charges were too high or just unexpected. Now, again, if you can offer free shipping, try your best to, and you know, there are some cases where you don't wanna offer free shipping, um, but most of the time you can try to incorporate into your sales price, right? Um, but again, 
these small kind of things, you, you want to at least be aware of the reasons why your demographic, your audience isn't doing certain things or why they're leaving your site, why they're dropping off. You know, maybe they add a bunch of your products to cart, but you, you know, you charge a lot of tax or you don't incorporate the tax as well into your product price. So now they're getting hit with like ta like sales tax um, and the shipping charge. And they're just like, okay, this went from a $20 product to like a $30 product or something. Right. And again, that's unexpected. They aren't prepared for that. They'll drop off because you want to do as much as you can to minimize that sort of drop off. Right. What is a beginner? supposed to do or anyone's supposed to do trying to prepare for this okay well one increase your AOV your average order value okay so like literally just like get saucy with it if Facebook is gonna charge you 43% more to get a customer then find ways to get that customer to buy more from your site okay it, I mean it, it sounds simple it's not that simple but there are a lot of things you can do to combat this, right? You can add upsells, you can add cross sells, you can figure out things that, hey, if they buy this product that I'm selling, what would go, what would accompany it really well? Can I bundle this with something else just to squeeze an extra, you know, five, seven, eight, ten dollars um, from this customer, which will help offset this bigger increase in ad spend that I'm gonna be facing. But you just gotta get creative with it and just, you know, like learn the game, play by the rules so you know what to do, right? If you were spending $20 to get a, a sale of a $60 product, right? That means, or let's just assume your cost of goods was like, let's just say, let's say $20 as well, okay? So in total, it's $40 out the door when someone buys a $60 product, you're left with $20 of profit, right? That's like a 33% margin, which is good, right? But if ads increase from $20 to $28 cost per purchase, your cost of goods is still $20, then that's what, $48 to sell a $60 product. You're making $12 profit instead of 20, um, which is like a, like a 20% profit margin or something like that, which is still good, okay? But obviously, you can, there's always ways to improve. There's always, you know, things you can do to make more money and get the most out of what you're spending, right? So again, that's how we do upsells, cross sales. I know some people that instead of adding an additional product, they just add like a, a lifetime warranty for $5 that they can buy after they purchase the product. And it's like, hey, for $5, we'll cover this, you know, for, for the lifetime. And most people, you know, they'll buy it, but they'll never use it. They just want to have that sort of like security and that safe factor knowing that, okay, if something does happen, I can fall back on this, right? Most times they'll even forget about it. Um, but that's like, that's on them. Like we're still offering it. You still, you know, obviously honor it. Um, yeah, that's another thing you can do. Number two, incorporate prices into your sales price, okay? Incorporate taxes if you're charging taxes, which you should be now because that you kind of have to now. It's a law thing. You know, two years ago, you didn't have to. But try and incorporate taxes um, into your sales price. It'll be a little bit confusing your back end if you don't have like sort of like an accounting app installed so that you just have to be aware that, okay, yes, I'm accounting for taxes in my sales price. I'm gonna deduct that later on. And then also try and account for shipping price if you can, okay? Um, doesn't have to be, you know, that's not like a mandatory sort of rule. There's definitely ways, especially for like Black Friday, Cyber Monday and stuff where you can do like, hey, free shipping on everything you can just use that as sort of like a, a motivator to buy you don't have to have that all across the board for q4 but i would definitely test okay number three guys like this is probably the most important thing make sure your site is mobile optimized this is huge okay especially going into 2020 there's a few different things right one load times load times are huge there's an app like bulk image edit app that one would probably help the most i'd say uh, it's just bulk image edit okay any sort of app on shopify that will compress images and help with seo okay because you have to understand what is a website website is just a bunch of code now when you go to a website right it renders out that code and it has to pull images from its servers that is you know grabbing data from and everything like that images take up a lot of data and take up a lot of load times which, which can slow you down by milliseconds and they kind of stack up and people are not patient people are not patient especially with amazon you know making things like now 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 and just just in this day and age like even people our age or younger like no one's patient okay and so you have to realize that they will leave your site right away even after you spent all that money you know making all those good ad creatives you know optimizing your targeting on paid ads and doing that all that work just just to have a slow website and they leave it's almost like having like a boat and there's a hole in the boat or there's a few small holes in the boat and you want to like fix the holes right so you want to first identify the holes right so again if your load time is like slow identify that hole where you're just leaking out free money basically and then fix the hole um <laughs> Yeah, and then two, clear images, no pixelated stuff, especially on mobile, right? I see a lot of you guys, you know, you optimize for desktop, it looks good on desktop, but you don't realize that, oh, your your site's good for desktop, but you didn't 
take the time to understand that you're running Instagram story ads for 90% of your advertising outlet or medium of choice and your site is for desktop. No one's going to see, they're not going to see the desktop version first at least, which is the most important thing. So again, clear images, not pixelated um, anywhere on the site. Okay. You want to be super strict about that. Number two, product info. Again, these are all reasons. Facebook literally posted a thread about this. These are reasons people weren't buying from the sites that they're sending, you know, uh, clicks to or like, you know, sending traffic towards, right? Reason number three, product info was too difficult or there's not enough reviews. Like this sort of social proof thing, there's, there's a lot of apps out there that will do it or help you get reviews. You can find reviews or import reviews um, from AliExpress, from Amazon, that sort of thing. So product info is too difficult, right? You want to essentially identify the reason people are on your site. What's the problem they're trying to solve? What's the solution they're looking for? If, you do, if you're doing clothing or something, like do they want to just like feel good wearing it? Like you have to identify why they would buy your product and then address that in the description of your product. Okay, don't just put, you know, I, I see some people even copy and paste the AliExpress description um, over to Shopify, which is not what you want to do. Now, number four, content didn't fit on the screen properly. Okay, make sure your mobile images or your site on mobile, all the images you're using look good on mobile. Okay, some images might look good on desktop, but you go to the mobile site and it looks super messed up or it's just cropped weird, doesn't show the right portion of the image, um, that kind of thing. So you want to make sure that looks good too. Okay, now also, also, what you want to realize is that there are certain apps, right? So this is, I think, something a lot of people don't kind of realize. Like, for example, if you have like a, a live chat app, right? A lot of people put that in the bottom right corner of the desktop, okay? But there's all the people that install like a, some people might install like a little, like a banner on the side that says, hey, click here for like 10% off your first order, right? The thing is on mobile, those can collide or they can overlap each other or do something. And one, it makes your site look terrible and two, it renders both of those things useless, okay? So there's just small things that you wanna be aware of. And again, it's like, the, the easiest way to fix this is to look on your mobile site and identify this, or even hand it to other people, friends, family, be like, yo, tell me what's wrong with this, okay? T tell me what I need to fix, okay? Now, number five, the last reason that Facebook says is the biggest top five reasons why people didn't buy on mobile sites is the font sizes were too small. So again, understand your demographic. If you're selling to 60, you know, people that are si like older than 60, 55 plus, you might want bigger text. We all know, you know, some, old family member that has the iPhone that has it on like size 50 font and they text like that. So again, just realize who you're selling to. Okay. Obviously you don't want super small font anywhere, but just again, make sure it's easily viewable. You again, you want to make it as easy as it is to purchase your products as possible. There should be no reason or no, you know, as, as little friction as possible uh, when purchasing your product. Okay guys. So that was the video. Uh, I didn't want to make it too, too long, but I did want to touch on a few things that you guys can do to improve your Q4 chances out there, right? So again, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to leave a like, make sure to subscribe guys. Both of those would mean so much to me. I love you guys. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next video. Make sure to drop a comment if you guys have questions or video ideas and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. We Peace.